I'm an internal medicine physician and primary care. And um, should I wear that? Switch. Yeah. <laughs> yeah for Q and a later. That's okay. So our program will uh, start and end in an hour, which will include the lecture, some demo. Uh, it's unmuted. Okay. And then at the end, well, it's a Q and a You know, I'm, I'm here as a resource. One one thing that I learned is uh, medical knowledge should not be left to the very few. It should be common knowledge, and that's what I'm here for for you. If you have burning questions that you know you never had an answer for, then I'll do my best to answer. And um, in the middle, when these children are restless, we're going to let them sing up front. Amen. <laughs> okay, they were they're they're going to sing with us too. And then again, last ten minutes would be Q and A. Okay, thank you for coming. This is I'm sure is a divine appointment for all of us. And yes. Oh, I, I, yeah, I can put that here. All right. And then the next slide is the clicker on that. Me, my husband, Alan, uh, we run a primary care clinic in Castle Rock. So it's natural minded, but I always say that I, I still have a prescription pad. So I do prescribe medications, um, but we, we educate, inspire, and we pray that the Lord will give efficiency to these uh, remedies. Do I just switch it this way? Yeah. Okay, good. Okay. So one principle of natural remedy for me is it has to be simple and easily accessible. I didn't want to, there's so much out there. I was praying, Lord, do you want me to take herbology? But that will take me to the exotic and hard to obtain. So if you see here, a lot of these materials are common, and we're going to talk about that. We wanted the materials to be simple and easily accessible. The foundation is obedience to health laws. When I was young, my mom always says, prevention is cure. That's right. Prevention is worth a pound of cure. So when we talk about natural remedies, good, we will do it. But the main purpose is let's try not to need them. Yes. When I go to a clinic, I say, I hope never to need your service. Does that make sense? When you go to an ophthalmologist or orthopedist. So we hope not to get there. But if we do, these are the things that you can use. We have to live the anti-inflammatory lifestyle, which will be a lot of the new start and a little bit of the things I will share. And our principle really for us personally is balanced, unprocessed, and plant-based. Let's read this all together, friends. And we cannot be too often reminded that health does not depend on chance. It is a result of obedience to law. Ministry of Healing, page 125. So healthy is not uh, by osmosis. It's very intentional. Next slide would be, okay. So we have to reason from cause to effect, address the cause. When my son, and he's here, very active, six-year-old, when he's sick, He's coughing, I would ask him, why are you sick? He will say, I think I ate a lot of sugar, I haven't been sleeping early, and I haven't been drinking water. Amen? <laughs> right? We have to say, which among the health laws did we break? Because this body, again, is the crowning work of God's creation. It takes a lot of insult for you to get sick. And, you know, you, you miss hydration for one day, will you get sick? No. But you miss it consistently, and then you sleep late, and I know that by experience, right? So we have to go back and see, because illness is nature's way of redirecting us back to the ideal uh, situation for health. So we talked about nutrition. It's in your handout. You should have two pages, both back and forth, so that's four pages of handouts. In the British Medical Journal of Nutrition during COVID, they studied a big group of healthcare workers. And the question was, is the diet of that healthcare worker related to how severe their COVID was? Okay, you'll see that it's a very small slide. And they, they noted that those who are pescatarians have some protection, about 50% reduced severe COVID. Um, Plant-based is... 74% reduced severe COVID and 
you know, traditional meat eaters were more than 300% likely to experience severe COVID. And very briefly, the reason for that is your immune system wants a base environment, basic pH. And when you eat meat, it creates an acidic environment. Therefore, your, your soldiers don't go where they need to go. So that's just what I'll say about nutrition. Oh, and one more thing. So who has this at home? Mason jars. What is this? Sprouting lid. It's a sprouting lid, right? So what you do is you put water, it goes through the mesh, and then you soak your beans, your lentils, your legumes, your quinoa, your buckwheat, your caniwa, your amaranth for 12 hours and, and uh, rinse them. And then after 12 hours, you remove the water, turn it 45 degrees, and the beans is still moist. And what will start to happen? Sprouting. It will sprout. The germination process happens. And the, absorp uh, the nutrition comes out and the digestion is better. When digestion is better, friends, you get to enjoy all the nutrition of what you eat. So, and this is also anti-inflammatory. So some people, uh, they say they can't take beans because it causes them to have gas. Have you heard that before? Mm -hmm. Okay. So it's, um, it's because the covering of these beans were created by the Lord to protect it from pests, but it's not easily digestible. So in the process of hydrolysis, hydrolysis, breaking it down by water, it dissolves and then you are able to ingest it and, you're, and then it cooks very quickly, it absorbs very quickly. So one thing that I can share with you, if you have um, quinoa or you know, a lot of people are, are experienced with that, if you're not yet soaking and sprouting, please do so. There's always something soaking and sprouting in our kitchen sink. Care of my husband. <laughs> okay, all right. Next is exercise. So I, I know somebody personally who had low white cells and then the, we went to the oncologist, hematologist, he said, there's such a thing as lazy white cell count. So I want you to walk, like, I think 10 minutes, and then go get your blood draw again, and the white cell count goes up. So when we're lazy, our white cell counts are lazy too. So when we're sedentary, we are more likely to get sick. Water, W, we need to detox with water. What's the formula? Half your body weight in pounds. So, uh... Ounces. Math, 140 pound lady needs to drink how many ounces of water a day? 70. 70. But I'm gonna pee, exactly. That's what <laughs> we need. We need to detox, right? If you don't wanna be waking up at night too often, then just don't drink two hours from bedtime. That's good, okay. and go before you go to bed. But friends, we need water. Is coffee water? No. Juice water? Soda water? Okay, it's liquid. When people say there's water in coffee, it ceases to be water when you add something. It becomes a solution. Okay, our body needs water. How many percent water? About 75, 74%. We need that. Oh, I have a whole spiel on water, but that's it for today. Sunshine. Have you seen the sun lately? No. Okay, a little bit. Okay. So, sunshine in the summer... Your vitamin D, they say sunshine gives me vitamin D. No, sunshine activates vitamin D in your skin, and then it stores in your fat cells for you to use in the winter time. So sometimes I ask my patients to check it right before winter so we know how much to supplement. And then in the summer, get a lot of that. I had a patient from Florida. She was so depressed after moving here, but she didn't want to start any medications. We checked her vitamin D. It was extremely low. We replaced her vitamin D. She didn't need any antidepressants. It's very important to get that, okay? And vitamin D makes your calcium absorption good for your bones. What's temperance? Who can give me a spirit of prophecy definition of temperance? I don't have a price. And how about the good things? Moderation. In moderation. Good. Abstinence in, in the evil and moderation in the bad. So I don't say moderation in everything because I cannot say drink moderately or smoke moderately. Okay? Only good in moderation. So those are notes in our book. Air, who opens their window even in the winter time in their bedroom? It's very important. Just two hours of two people breathing the same air in a room will cause that oxygen to go down. And you're going to breathe, but you're just not going to breathe oxygen, right? 
We only have 21% oxygen in the air, and then you breathe the same air. We need to change the air in our homes. Rest, sleep, right? So recently I've been reviewing, and this is a quick news start, from 9 p.m. to 12 midnight, who is aware of the lymphatic system to clean up our circulation, yes? So our brain also has a lymphatic system. It's called the glymphatic system, and it works between 9 p.m. to 12 midnight. Mm. So I have a patient that sleeps by 4 a.m., 5 a.m., and whenever I see her, she says, my memory is not good. Why do we think so? Right? We have to sleep. And you know, they learned that Alzheimer's creates a lot of tangles, and they're, they're more and more finding out that these are waste materials that are not being cl cleansed from the brain. We need that rest. And what is our weekly rest? Today is our Sabbath rest. And trust in God. So when we trust the Lord, we are not fearful because perfect love casts out fear. Friends, if there's any fear in our heart, that means we have not met the perfect love of Christ who will lead us to the cross and we're fine whatever happens to the world. Amen? Okay, now let's get to business. So natural remedies in the Bible, just one example. Any example you think about? Sorry. Hyssop? Okay. Which story is that? Like, cleanse me with hyssop and I will be white as snow? Okay. Uh, another. You know, that's so true. Did you hear that, friends? Hezekiah figs. So Hezekiah has a smoldering something. So that she was told, just put figs and he was cleansed. So uh, if you have figs, you can. I did freeze them. So whenever somebody has any skin issues, we can put that there. We are not talking about that today. And here is a very important quote. Let's read it again together. The use of natural remedies require an amount of care and effort that many are not willing to give. Nature's process of healing and of building is gradual. And to the impatient, it seems slow. The surrender of hurtful indulgences requires sacrifice. But in the end, it will be found that nature, untrammeled, does its work wisely and well. Those who persevere in obedience to its laws will reap the reward in health of body and health of mind. Amen. So, um, natural remedies will not as work as quickly because the body needs to repair slowly, right? Another thing also is, have you heard of the pill for every ill, <laughs> right? Go to the doctor, and I'm talking, I can't talk about doctors that way because I'm one of them, right? <laughs> okay, you go to the doctor, I have a headache, here's a pill. I have this, here's something else. They, we don't really ask why. So that's, we don't want natural remedies to be treated as a pill for every ill. Remember, we have to find the cause. We have to find the cause. And the natural remedies only help the body heal by giving it the right circumstance or the right situation. Did we get that? Is that all okay? Yes? Okay, so we're going to talk about symptoms, what we can do at home, when to ask for help, and natural remedies. So it's important to know when it's dangerous already, isn't it? So I'm going to tell, give you a lot of information. Some of them may relate to you and some of them may not. And you should have papers and pens because the rest will be um, just, we're just going to say it. All right. Let's start from the very beginning. These are the top reasons for urgent care visits, and number one is respiratory. And do you know what, friends? I, I noticed that in the summertime, I don't see anybody for cough and colds. As soon as the sun hides, I have a cold, can you see me, you know? So number one is colds, which is really the rest, right? Colds are sniffy nose, sore throat, wheezing, sinus congestion. So let's go one by one, sore throat. First question, is it a strep throat? Right? Don't you, don't you find yourself asking that? Is it strep throat? What does the doctor do when you go there? They look at your throat. And what else can they do sometimes? They swab your throat and then put it in a testing if it's strep throat. I'm going to share with you four things that are very important, and you can do your own triage at home. That's the purpose. What is strep throat? Number one, what, when you look at the throat, if you're with your spouse, are you used to looking somebody's throat? Looking at? Okay, if you're beside somebody that you know personally, try that. Look at each other's throat. 
and the tongue should be flat. Okay? When some, but sometimes when they stick their tongue out, it blocks the back of the tongue. You have to see. I use my cell phone mirror, uh, uh, light, that's very important. So you'll see a little bit red, maybe pinkish, but when you see pus going outside the, the tonsils, that's plus one point for strep throat, okay? Number two, high fever. Strep throat has high fever. Number three, strep throat doesn't have a cough. It's just strep throat. Number four, feel the back of your neck here. Do you feel any lumps there? And it will feel like a green pea, you know, green peas under your skin. That's what lymph nodes feel like. So people with strep throat will have four out of four of that. What is it again? Number one, pus in your throat. Will there be a fever? Will there be a cough? Do you have a lymph node in the back of your throat? Yes. Four over four to three over four, most likely strep throat. Two, one or two, not strep throat. They're, we are taught to test if we're in the two or three when we're like questioning it, okay? So if you are, there's no pus, you have a sore throat, fine. There's no pus, you're coughing, you don't have fever, and you don't feel any lump, is that strep throat? Don't ask for an antibiotic, okay? An antibiotic will ruin your gut like nothing, and it will take a long time to recover. It will recover, but it will take some time. So if, for example, you have sore throat, can you shoot me some ideas of what you do at home for sore throat? Salt and water, very good. Since I was young, I've done that. Sorry. Where will you put it? Over your neck. Okay, we'll sock with ice over your neck. That's like a contrast cold and moist. Okay, honey, lemon, honey, and ginger. All good. We've all done that. Drink more water, we all go to the new start, right? So, you know, one thing that I do, which is like wool socks with ice, is you get a, a washcloth. You, you need to, like a handkerchief. One washcloth is wet, you put it over your neck, and then the other is dry, and you put it over and you sleep with it. So what that does, it creates a contrast while you're sleeping. And you remember, you're porous, so that temperature goes through your neck also. A second one is gargle with water and a little bit of uh, oregano essential oil. Because oregano is very anti-inflammatory. They've studied this in COVID, and that's in your handout. We're going to talk about that later when we go to sinus congestion. So you put it in water, dilute it, mix it very well, and you gargle with it. H how many have we? We've heard a lot, right? I I'll add one more. One more that I do for the children when they say their throat is itchy and scratchy, I mix, and every home should have activated charcoal, fluid grade, one tablespoon to eight ounces of water, mix properly, and I spoon it to them. And I tell them to swallow it slowly. The charcoal coats the throat, and then it relieves itching and pain. That's one thing that, that we've done at home. So, sore throat. You know what to do? So... Strep throat is not bad, but I'm going to tell you a, a very bad situation where you have stre uh, sore throat would be abscess, tonsillar abscess. That's a medical emergency. It needs to be drained. You probably need anti IV antibiotics. That's when half of your, when you look at your throat, half of it is bigger, much bigger and redder, and you'll have high fevers and chills. At that point, it, it's a good idea to be seen. Or if, if it's everything below that, you can handle it at home. Okay, good? Moving on. Wheezing. Okay. Wheezing can be for people with asthma. It can be for people just who had bronchitis. Have you had wheezing even without asthma? Yes. Okay. Throw me some natural remedies you use for wheezing. What do you inhale? Okay, so do you do steam? Is that what it is? Okay, steam inhalation with eucalyptus. Okay, camphor, menthol, all eucalyptus base. Anything else? What do you do for wheezing at home? Remember, there's natural remedies, so we won't say albuterol, right? <laughs> albuterol inhaler or nebulizer. Okay, so you know what? This is one thing when Audric again, he was so sick and wheezing. You can hear the wheezes. Do you need a stethoscope to listen to lung sounds? 
No. When when I forget my stethoscope at home, I just put my ear right at the at the back and ask them to take a deep breath. So have you heard wheezing? It's like a whistle. So when we were so exhausted, 2 a.m., and I'm like, Lord, I don't know what to do. And you know, he impressed me with onion inhalation. Have you heard of that? You cut the onion, cut it in half, doesn't matter which way. And have you smelled onion? Okay, as soon as people are sick at home, we have onion in the bedside. Uh, the fumes and the absorption also. So the Lord said onion inhalation. Okay, Lord, how will this work? So I cut it fresh, put it in his mouth, in his uh, here. And then when the, when the smell, because I can smell it too, because I was carrying him, when the smell goes down, I dig my finger in to get the juice out. And in a few minutes, he would quiet down and he wouldn't wheeze anymore. So I thought, oh, maybe that's just, maybe it doesn't really work. It happened again, because he wheezes when he has sugar. Audric, did you have sugar today? <laughs> so he knows that. So, and then he, it happened again, and we did it again, and it quieted down again. And I thought I was the only one who did it. We met a family from Ohio whose husband is a pulmonologist, and that's what they do at home too. They do onion inhalation. Very simple. Remember, we want things that are easily accessible. Good. Onion inhalation for wheezing. Just one. There's a lot more you can do. Hot baths, you know, when you open up the the circulation when you soak them in hot water, then all the circulation would open up and that would be okay too. But we're here to learn simple things. Sinus congestion, steam inhalation. Who has not done steam inhalation here? Not experienced? You have not? No? Okay, so everybody knows how to do steam inhalation. So friends, as soon as I think that I'm going to come up with something, I do this twice a day. If I'm sick, I do it four times a day or more. So you boil water, and I always say don't use the coated cookware because you're going to be inhaling that. So you boil water, and the smaller your pot, the shorter your inhaling time. So that I just brought this for example. You make it as big as you can, put it into a rolling boil, I have a 100% pure oregano oil. I only put one to two drops. It's very strong, can burn your eyes. I mix it with, um, with a fork so that it's really not just sitting on top, but it's there. And then I take a towel, I'm sorry. I take a towel over my head and then I do my inhalation. You need tissue beside you because you're gonna drain. After that, what do you do? You wash your face with? cold water to close your pores, okay? And sometimes when I have severe sinus infection, I even ice. So I do a contrast of steam and I have ice and I ice where it needs to, like here on my frontal sinuses and my maxillary sinuses, and then wipe my, my, my face and then do it all over again, okay? So friends, NyQuil or DayQuil does not match with steam inhalation. This will open you up like nothing, especially if you have oils. So this is one thing I recommend for people to have really 100% oregano oil. Um, I tell people that I have averted because everybody has a different walk, but I have uh, decided not to really take any meds, not even Tylenol or ibuprofen. So one time I was feeling sinuses, sinus infection coming because that's always my illness before. So I will do all of this and it will get averted. Okay. Uh, sinus congestion. Another thing is, this is a product, you can do it yourself, but this has clove and oregano drops, and you, I just use it multiple times a day as needed. It's very sharp, and it will, you know, you'll kind of feel it coming in. If you want to do it yourself, then you get distilled water, bottle like this. Um, the ratio is in, your, is in your handout on how to make it at home, okay? But you can also get this. You can also do it uh, for this is for the nose, but you can do a spray for your throat when you travel, especially just water your essential oil and, and put it there because you inhale and swallow all those viruses also. Sinus congestion. Another thing you can do, what I do is I dilute eucalyptus or oregano. You dilute it in olive oil or um, sunflower oil. There's another thing that I, it's almond oil that's escaping my mind. And I actually put it here. Because 
Can you feel there? You'll feel a dip. Try to feel it. You'll feel a dip there. And in anatomy, that's a hole in your face where arteries, veins, and nerves pass through. And they go to your sinuses. So I applied here, not just here. You know, Vicks, they applied here. And so I applied here and massage it in. That's one thing. Another thing that I do, and I've started doing this if I see somebody sick, I have a tissue, and I don't have a, a small tissue here. I fold it, and then I put a drop of eucalyptus on the tip, and I ask them to just put it in their nose. And then they're, they're going to inhale it. It doesn't need to stay there only for a few minutes. They would stop coughing, and then their sinuses would just get relieved also, and then they don't feel like they just want to, like, very heavy on the face. There's a lot that you can do. Did you get that? Okay, good. And I do that while I'm interviewing them, and they just feel immediate relief on it. Okay, next. So I think that's good on, on sinus congestion. What's number one prevention for urinary tract infection? We're on number two. Water. You know, I attended a big conference at, I think, where's that? In Mason, Virginia Mason. They did, they did uh, w when they gather all these studies, they in evaluated all the UTI, recurrent UTI, and the conclusion of all of these studies is water. So it's so sad because I have patients, I have patients who would rather take an antibiotic every day than increase their water intake. Are you one of those friends? I hope not. The people of the Lord should be the head and not the tail, right? The healthiest people. So... Um, she would rather take an antibiotic every day that will ruin her gut than to increase her water intake. We need that water, especially for women. What other UTI remedies do you have? Cranberry juice, okay. So one thing, cranberry juice you can take, it does have some high sugar, but I've heard that, and I have not experienced this, is the cranberry juice diluted, but drink throughout the day. Not just one cup. But throughout the day, that's what you're going to drink. Okay, good. Concentrate. Good. And you dilute it with water, and you drink it throughout. And in your, in your um, handout, there's onion broth. It's very simple. Boil water, cut an onion, crush garlic, add salt. But my patients like flavor, so they add oregano and clove and thyme, whatever you want to add there. And that's like an antibiotic that you use multiple times a day to flush out. You can also do a sitz bath. Yes. Okay, yes. Mm -hmm. Yes, I have patients who use that. Did you hear that? Uva ursi. I think it's U-V-A-U-R-S-I, right? Yeah. But you can also do a sitz bath. You know what a sitz bath is? It's this something that you put on the bowl. You put warm water there and sit on it. It will also help if you have a bladder infection. But friends, what is it again? An ounce of prevention is worth. So let's not get there. Ear infection. Yes, Joyce. That's right, Dimanos. Mm -hmm. That's true, because uh, urologists put that in their recipe for recurrent UTI. They add D-mannose to there. It's a form of sugar that is present in some, f some fruits, I think. Okay. Okay, so you, you got that. Remember, don't get there, but if you do get there, these are the things that you can do. Concentrated cranberry juice, um, no sugar added, and then your onion broth multiple times a day uva, ursi, and then you can also do your sitz bath for UTI. Ear infection. How do you know if it's an infection? There are two kinds, right? Outer and inner ear. If, if children were swimming, their ear can get inflamed. If you went to the doctor and they were flushing your ear to get your wax out and they did it too much, you can get infected also. An inner ear infection can, is right after the tympanic membrane, and it can rupture and uh, drain from your ear also. So one thing that I would just say there for, for relief is a wash rag that's warm, 
over the ear. We've also done warmed onion over the ear. The fumes just go through there. And we haven't kneaded this, but one thing you can do is you mince garlic and then you squeeze the oil out. And then the oil do not apply because it's very strong. You have to dilute it with olive oil and put a few drops to the ear. One thing that we've taught is if it's a ruptured ear, do not put anything inside. But you know, we, when the ear is ruptured and they tell you to do your drops, you will do it. And usually after two weeks, that ear would heal. It doesn't need to be open all the time. Okay, eye infection. Very quickly though for eye infection, my only remedy for that is when we've had eye infection before, the, the patient has their own trash bag where they would wipe and throw, wipe and throw. It's remove contagious contagion. Don't make it very contagious. One also is your onion broth. That's what I use also. That onion broth, we cool it. We've tried it for eye stuff. You have to have like your thin tissue. You soak it and you put it over the eye for a few minutes. It's, it's not going to burn. That's important. Children, get ready. Two minutes. So what, uh, another thing is, the, are you ready? Okay. We're going to review and then they're going to sing. We're not going to touch on all of them because we're running out of time. Which one do you want to address after this, the, the eye infection? The, sorry? Headaches, okay. Skin infection, okay. Okay, we'll try. Headaches and skin infections are big. I suffered from headaches many days a week, and I just accepted it as my fate, but you don't need to. Okay, so which one would you do? Let's see. Uh, who's gonna, when they have a sore throat, who will put a rag over their throat, wet to dry? I've done that. How about an uh, oregano gargle? Is that something you're willing to do? Okay. Uh, sore throat, we know. How about wheezing? Who's going to do onion inhalation? It's very easy. Some people, though, are averse to that, but I am not. How about sinus congestion? Who's going to start steaming whenever they feel like their head is heavy and their sinuses are, are getting... Okay. Before you get there, while you're preparing, remember that tissue? Top of the tissue, just you just make you know something that will enter your nose, kind of like that. Put a drop of essential oil and stuff it up there and just inhale it while you're preparing your steam. You can go ahead. What is it you're singing? I will sing of my Redeemer. Okay. So ch would you like to sing with them? Okay. Yeah, go ahead. And I'm going to ask everybody to stand. So we're going to wake up. While they're, while they're making their way up. Okay, stand. And I want you to reach as high as you can. Okay, reach as high. Stretch, stretch. Go stretch on your right and stretch on your left. And then go and do your arms this way and put your scapula in the back together. And then put your hands right behind and stretch it a little bit. Okay, now I want you to roll your shoulders forward five times. One, two three, four, five, and the other way back. One, two, three, four, five. Now walk in place 10 counts. One, two, three, four, five. Now I want you to wring your arms this way. Okay, all right. Now walk in place 10 times again. One, two, three, four, five. Take a deep breath, inhale up. Exhale down, and let's do that one more time. Inhale up, exhale down. Okay, the children would sing. I will sing of my Redeemer. What hymn number? Where's the microphone? Let's have the children microphone. 343, okay. Tate, can you get the microphone? Yeah. Okay. We're going to get this thin. Where's this thin? Okay. Thank you, young friends. Isn't this cool? Is this the future of our church? Actually, they're the present. Thank you. Yellow. Where's my phone? Got there.
I think we should have a children's symphony, huh? Thank you. Wasn't that beautiful? It's beautiful to see our children serve at a very young age, huh? And we pray that that would continue and they would make our faith their own. You know, just the segue, I tell my children, it has to be your own faith. My faith, will, you know, it will inspire and guide, but we have to know our Savior at a personal level. Amen. Thank you, children. Okay, so we got that ear infection. Okay, we said headaches and skin. Because I'm going over time. I promised that I would just be here for... Am I going over time or no? Oh, I guess I thought I was speaking for 30 minutes. So, so I probably have 5, 10, 15, 20. Okay, so maybe we will touch on all of that. Okay, eye infection and now skin infection. So what is the most common skin infection you think? Sorry? Welts? Boils. Boils? Okay, candida. Cellulitis. Have you heard of that? It, it, it's just a description of this angry, red, swollen skin. So with boils, what would you do? What? Big poultice, Hezekiah, right? There's a no charcoal, just figs. Why no charcoal? Oh, this is a boil that has not erupted yet, is what you're talking about. Okay. That's right. Okay, let me let me um, wrap that up. 
So if you have a boil, what's the first question to ask? Why do you have a boil? Especially if you have recurrent boil, right? So it's about skin circulation. Your skin has circulation. The biggest organ in your body is your skin. You have to have good circulation everywhere so that the skin is affected. To prevent that, I would think that, you know, when you do your hot and cold shower, do you do that? <laughs> okay. Will, will I create that? You do? Really? Yes, I do sometimes. So it, it would create that circulation better in the skin. And should you unfortunately have a boil, you know, what would doctors do if you have a boil? They would do, they would lance it. They would do an incision and drainage. And I've done that in the past because the pain is so severe. I still remember a case. I was working in the weekend and this lady came with a large boil. I think it's in the side over here or I forget now. And she was just begging me to lance it. I knew it was not ripe yet. You know, it was still firm. You know that it has created a pus when it's softer. So I said, if I lance it, it will just be blood. Because you kind of know that because it should be yellow in the middle. But she was begging me because it was painful. But friends, this was when I had nothing better to offer to her but my knife which I did, and it didn't relieve her, it just caused her pain because when an area is infected, the lidocaine is almost neutralized as soon as it comes in because it's an acidic environment. So that you have to put a lot of lidocaine for it to even numb. And when I cut it, it was just blood and she didn't really feel relieved. And I wish I knew what I knew right now, which is what the first thing you would do is to do a hot compress right? Hot with a little cold. Now, um, hot compress would open the blood vessels and would relieve that congestion. And one thing I learned is don't lance an abscess if it's not ready yet. Let it erupt on its own. And you, when actually when you do the hot, it would ripen it and it would open up. And then you can do a fig to draw. If it's an open wound, you don't put charcoal because it will tattoo but in one of my lectures yes you can do clay are you familiar with clay bentonite clay so it's like it's not charcoal it is clay and it works by being moist it works almost the same it will not tattoo because your microphages will eat that pigment of the black and it will make an open wound black but I had a friend who had an uncle with third degree leg burns. They had no other choice. They put the charcoal in. They didn't need to do any surgery. It did become black, but how many days before your skin becomes new again? About, about three weeks. So then that pigment will also come up and it will go away. Okay. So that's one with boils, um, fig, Onion poultice will also work with boils. So what you just do is you chop your onion. Oh, I forgot to do my, my uh, homemade. Can we segue? Okay, we're gonna go back to cough. At our home, we don't drink any medicine. So we have a homemade um, cough recipe, cough syrup. And I wanted to show that to you, but I need a spoon. So onion, chopped onion in a glass jar, okay. I'm going to try to do that because I thought that I need this spoon. To mix it. So, okay. Okay, I'll go back to that when I have my spoon. <laughs> because we have to mix it and it will pull the, the honey will pull the juice from the onion and that's what you drink. And people will say, it really tastes good. You, I, I wanted to show you so you can pass it around and smell it. That's for the cough. We're gonna go back to the skin infection. So an onion poultice is you just chop the onion and then you saute it a little bit, not in oil, but water. So you kind of warm it up, put it over the wound and it's hard to put it because it will fray. So you put it in a little pocket. So if it's a bigger surface, you can get a small um, pillow. So that's like a pocket and you put it there. What, what do you use? Ga gauze? Paper towel, you can use that too. I, I watched someone who actually has these 
one side paper towel, one side plastic, and then she taped the sides and then created a pocket, and that's where they put the oil. You can also buy charcoal pads if you go to charcoalhouse.com. They have medicated charcoal pads that are ready to use, like bandages. You just open them up and put them where they need to go. Yeah, charcoalhouse.com. So skin infection, you can use that. Um, onion, we talked about charcoal, we talked about clay. You can also use potato. Have you done a potato poultice? So you just do a potato, you grate it, put it over. Oh, I have a story on that. I had a patient who had an abscess because of infected sebaceous cyst. Do you know what those are? You know, if you have a bump in your back and it's hard and it has a little hole in the middle, that's a sebaceous cyst. It can get infected. So his was getting infected and then he didn't want to take an antibiotic. So I said, this is what you do. You shred potato, put it over there, seal it, but will you leave it for 24 hours? I'm, I'm asking a question. You shouldn't because your skin will become so thin it will fray. So my rule is 10 to 10 to, 10 off, 2 off, sorry, 10 on, 2 off, 10 on, 2 off. Does that make sense? Just leave it on for 10 hours, but you need, you need two hours of the skin break so that your skin will not be immersed all the time with that? Yes. That's with any poultice in my book. Yeah, you can move it too. Okay, we're gonna go back to the onion here and you're gonna put it here. My ratio for this is one cup chopped onion to one tablespoon honey. You don't want too much of the honey because that's gonna feed any um, yeast in your gut. Oh, although they say honey, well, oh, bacteria cannot grow in honey, but yeast likes it. Okay, here you go. You just put it there. And the key here is you have to mix, mix well, mix well, and then leave it out. So we, we usually have this, and how often will you change the onion? I think uh, you just remove the juice and then the onion will eventually change in color, so you're, you're gonna need to make a new batch again. I think you did for me. Thank you. We'll go back to that. I helped a, a gentleman who had a bee sting, and then the bee sting became cellulitis. It was so beefy red, and he couldn't walk. He was a young 30-something-year-old gentleman. He couldn't put pressure on his leg because it was infected. So the first thing we did is we applied ice. That's another thing. It's really in the strains and sprains that I talk about this, but since it makes sense, when you have any, any uh, redness like that, you need to apply ice. Would you put an ice on an ice pack and put it in your skin? Some yes, some no. But in our experience, do you have pores? We are porous. We are not like we are porous. So in our experience, when you apply ice, you have to apply it directly. No cling wrap, no Ziploc, no ice bag. Has to be ice. People will say, but I don't have ice at home. What will you do? Okay, water in the freezer. But we're going to pretend that this is, let's say, this, yes, but vegetables, frozen veggies. Is that what you said? They're in a plastic bag too. If you don't have ice, okay, good. But what we do, even when we travel, as soon as we get to a place with a freezer, let's say this is a disposable cup, we just fill it to the brim and stick it in the freezer. So then we have an ice and we have a handle. So whenever you need it, you just grab it and then you put it where it needs to go. Does that make sense? So this leg, and I wish I took pictures because it was very red, we applied direct ice on it. And as soon as the ice gets into the skin, it melts because it was so hot. And what, when that happens, there is an exchange on the cellular level of the fluid kind of through the pores of the cold and the, and the heat of the infection. So the, the redness shrunk and shrunk and shrunk. And then after that, we put a charcoal poultice. So how do you do a charcoal poultice? Okay, how do you do this? Black seeds, water, and charcoal. But 
You know what I realized? In the beginning, I would put equal parts of charcoal and flax, and it's so lumpy. So what do you do? Who wants to speak? Just charcoal and water for you. Make it into a paste, a little thinner than tooth toothpaste. So charcoal and water. Did you say serang wrap? Oh, ace bandage, ace bandage, yes. So like, uh, what are those called? Coban. <laughs> like. Okay. Coban, yeah. yeah, cool. So did you say, mom, did you say you don't use flax? Okay. So this is only, uh, so why do we use flax when we do charcoal poultice? Creates, it makes it like a gel. That's right. So did you hear what she said? She said when you have a bee sting, you don't think about that. This is one thing I learned. I, I was listening to a lecture, and these were ER physicians that have moved to regular medicine to just natural medicine. They always have a charcoal poultice frozen in their freezer. So they create it. So what we do, what we realized is you add water, you add charcoal as much as you want, and then you slowly add bits, I would say like half a teaspoon or one fourth teaspoon of flaxseed and mix it until you get to the gelatinous consistency that you'd like. When you mix uh, flax and charcoal equal parts, it will be very lumpy and then you can freeze it, you can use it anytime. I would just put it maybe in a cling wrap or, yes, Joyce. Uh-huh. Hmm, not just for the gel. Okay, there's additional benefit to the flax, okay. So they would just apply it. Because it will, you know, the body heat is uh, warmer than the frozen, it will melt. Yeah, so people have used this for spi recluse spider bites, you know, abscess and boils, yes. Is there flax, ground flax seed? Is there a substitute for to flax? Allergy to flax? Sorry? Chia seeds, I would think. I have not tried it. You've tried it. How about psyllium? Psyllium husk. That probably would work. I'm just thinking about it. Um, so that's for abscess. Potato, onion, uh, clay. Uh, what did we say? Charcoal poultice. Carrot poultice, wow, good. There's one more I forgot. Okay, that's enough, that's a lot, right? So remember, don't keep it on too long because it will fray your skin, yes. So psoriasis is an entirely different disorder. Psoriasis is you're creating too much skin, that's why you're flaking and it's pushing it to the surface. Psoriasis is an autoimmune disease and it's, um, it has to be this entire program. Oh, I forgot. I'm glad you asked. So for Adventists, we recommend medmissionary.com to, to take that course, medmissionary.com. And it's a miraculous, I think, God-ordained way to heal with autoimmunity. 
So for uh, non-Adventists, it, it is an Adventist program because it talks a lot about spirit of prophecy. For our friends that are non-Adventist, there's autoimmunerecoveryplan.com. Autoimmunerecoveryplan.com. And this is all led by our friends, Dr. Joyce Shaw and Mercy Ballard, of which we were trained. Me and my husband went to the um, health retreat up in North California earlier last year. Okay? So I think we're covered with skin infection. Do you take an antibiotic? When do you start worrying about skin infection? If it's localized, you're okay. When you start seeing streaks of red creating phlebitis, that means that that infection is already spreading out. You probably you need to be seen. And of course, they'll give you an antibiotic. And don't forget, while you have any skin infection, you're doing your onion broth three to four times a day. Okay, so if you suffer from brain fog, fatigue, lack of energy, abdominal pain, leaky gut, leaky brain, psoriasis, uh, Hashimoto's thyroiditis, I really recommend you take the med missionary course. If you have essential tremors, you can't write anymore, you can't you know, eat because of tremors, even patients with Parkinson's will be benefited by this course. Okay, so sprains and strains, we kind of talked about that already, which is the ice. As soon as an injury happens, you need to get to direct ice multiple times. Our daughter, Aliana, was running, and her shin uh, went from top to bottom on, what is this, rough cement stairs. That was hurt. That was owie. And so we were in a group of doctors, right? And people gave us ice on a Ziploc, but me and my husband applied it directly. You apply it when she says, it's too cold, then you dab it with a tissue, then you apply it again. I think we did it continuously for 10 minutes. She ran after that. And after that, I think we did it for one, two more days at home. Once a day, there was no wound. That would have been disaster if that didn't happen, right? Because this, this is very hard to heal because there's not a lot of tissue between the bone. And it can, you know, it can even go to the bone. But praise the Lord for ice. So sprains and strains. You know, I was here in this church when I heard about the cabbage poultice. Did you hear that? Who gave that talk? Oh, there you go. So what did you say? or any sprain really. So it, you don't need to chop it. You just get the cabbage leaf. You said, wash it and apply it. You know, I told that to my friend who sprained her ankle. She sprained her ankle. She couldn't walk. She was limping. And it was the evening when I saw the text. It was a group text. Then the Lord impressed me. So I said, do you have cabbage there? She said, yes. Okay, get a big leaf, wash it, wrap it, in your, in your ankle overnight, she walked the next day. Very simple. So I like that cabbage. Now, another thing that I learned is ginger poultice. You grate the ginger. So we had a guest at home. She had a swollen knee. She was walking on a walker. So she went to our home to visit. And then we always have ginger frozen because ginger goes bad quick. So our ginger are always in the freezer. So I asked her permission, can I, can I apply a ginger poultice? She said, sure. So great, 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 a very fine grater. Put it, I said, one finger, where does it hurt? So she put it there, and that's where we concentrated. Then the ginger, we put a cling wrap over it. Oh, this is, by the way, this Glad Press and Seal. It sticks to skin better than your regular cling wrap. So we have a bunch of this, and you can, you can check here later. So we, we wrapped it, and after I think an hour and a half after dinner was over, I took the poultice out, and she walked out of the house without the walker. She said, this is amazing. But the thing with ginger poultice, you, you don't leave it overnight because it can create too much heat. It will wake you up because it will start feeling burny. So you just apply it for about one or two hours. So for joints also, potato will do good for joints, but ginger is better, yes. Okay, so the ratio, I don't really have a ratio. It depends on tolerance. So once the patient says, it hurts, then you withdraw it, and then you dab it, and then you come back again. 
But I would do it for, we did it for 10 minutes. That was a good one, okay? How about uh, muscle tightness? You know, when I had a patient who missed three steps of stairs and then fell and down, and then she had a big muscle tightness here on the hip. What would you do with that? Since we're going to sprains and strains. Ice, that's true. The first week of injury, you have to be ice because you're trying to reduce inflammation. After that, you need a different approach. After the first week, you need hot and cold, ideally moist heat. So how do you create moist heat if you don't have the thermophore? So I tell them to get a washcloth and make it damp, put it in the area where it needs moist heat, and then put the heating pad over it. So that will create the moist heat. But if you have a muscle, uh, what do you call that? Muscle sprain, strain, and it, it just, it's very tight, you do moist heat with a cold revulsive. What that means is you apply moist heat for, usually the ratio is one is to three. So if you do one minute of cold, you do three minutes of hot. Does that make sense? It's just one is to three. And then I told her after she does this, that she needs to do, like, I'm going to pretend this is our ice. After she does 10 minutes of this, <clears throat> what's one is to three? She needs to do a, at least a very quick cold rub and then do it again three times. Did you get that? Moist heat and then cold. Moist heat, cold, three times. You know, I called her after two weeks, two days to check how is your, because her hip here feels good, but here it feels like a rock. So I told her, how is your uh, hip feeling? She said both sides felt the same. And this was after two weeks of trying muscle relaxant, and she was applying ice only, so it needs both. That contrast needs both for your muscles to lengthen. Okay, I think we're good with strains and strains. Headache, what do you do for headache? Sorry? That's number one. When I don't have water, I have a headache. There are multiple kinds of headache. There's a dehydration headache, Water. Why does water work when you have a headache? Sorry. The brain is 80% water, and most of our blood flow go to the brain. Friends, if most of your blood flow go to the brain, if you take something that reduces blood flow, what organ suffers the most? Your brain. This is why I tell people, uh, not to drink coffee. And this is coming from me who drank only coffee during residency. I only I lived on one pot of coffee and no water, right? But now the Lord brought me out of darkness into light. If you are free, you will be free indeed. So, you know, what they did a research where, you know the PET scan? What is that? Positron emission to, you know. It's where they look at what part of your brain has the most blood flow. So they had a picture of the brain before caffeine and after caffeine, and there was a 40% reduction of blood flow to the brain after caffeine. Who wants to operate on 40% less blood flow to the brain? <laughs> I can't afford that. So headaches. So uh, we talked about water. Water works because it makes your blood thin and it gets to your brain better. If there is something called a cervicogenic headache, which means the neck pain is causing the headache. So you always have to go to the source. Is your neck not aligned? Are you always on your phone? Is your pillow too high? Uh, do you have tight muscles that you need a massage for or maybe do a, a moist heat with ice? Do you need to stretch? Do you need to see a chiropractor? Do you need um, myofascial release? Did you, go, did you hear all of that? So you need to go to the source, number one. Coffee headache, people go get, because now you're go, all gonna have headaches because you're gonna stop drinking coffee, right? Okay, so a coffee headache, the best is, um, this is what we do. And this actually also works for sinus congestion, is you need cold, ice cold on the neck and the head so that the blood goes out of your neck and head because have you heard, had a throbbing headache? That's all the congestion to the head, boom, boom, boom. So you want to deviate that ice cold on the head, ice cold on the neck, and guess what, friends? Hot water on the feet. Hot water on the feet, not warm water. Hot enough to make your skin red, but not burn. Don't burn. So what that will do is it will deviate the blood flow to the feet, relieve you of congestion, and by the way, if you have high blood pressure at home, 
this also works because your blood, blood goes down to the feet. So I was working with a lady who had migraine. She said, I've, I've taken my codeine, I've taken Tylenol, ibuprofen. And then I said, okay, cold to the head and neck. I've done that. Three days, the whole weekend she was suffering. So I said, okay, if you've done that, now you need to soak your feet in hot water while this is happening. So I called her in two hours. She said, I can't believe it. I've been suffering the whole week and all I had to do is that. So headache, it works. Did you hear that, headache? Okay. Um, what are the cause of headache is, so headache, do I have a tumor? Have you thought about that? Maybe I have a tumor. Okay, I have patients coming to me. Do I have a tumor? So I ask all these questions. So I'm going to give you the typical. Now, this is not 100%, but this is typical. So um, when you have a tumor, that means the pressure in your head is higher. So usually it's morning headache with vomiting. Morning headache with just projectile vomiting. That means there's so much pressure in the head. When you were laying down, it was okay maybe because everything was equalized. And then when you start waking up, that's when you start having that. And of course, you'll have vision changes and sensorial changes when you're thinking about head tumor. So don't go there. <laughs> don't let your mind go there because fear is, you know, it's not good. Anything else you do for headache? Because this is our last topic. We're going to close soon. Good? Sleep. Did you say if you lack sleep, then you'll have a headache? Sleep off a headache. That's right. That's true. Good. If you lack sleep, you'll have a headache. Okay. Good. Very good. So are, are you going to do some of these things at home before you reach for that ibuprofen or Tylenol? That's right. Stress headache. Tension headache. Tension is like a band in your head like that. So you need, uh, you need to sleep. <laughs> okay, thank you. Um, any questions before we close? Steam, okay. The question is, if I have a nebulizer, can I put essential oils in it? I have not done this yet. During COVID, they were talking about hydrogen peroxide nebulization, iodine nebulization. You probably can do it, but I have not done it personally. I do. I use the, the water, the vapor, because the vapor on the nebulizer is not the same as a steam. It's hot. It's he you know, it, it, it goes through more. It penetrates more. Question? I was just going to say, that I have oh, sorry. It's um, a saline solution, and I had an extreme respiratory infection, and it cleared it up in two days. So, some, Mr. Sir here has experience using his nebulizer, and he mixed iodine with saline, yeah. and his respiratory infection cleared. Can I add something to that? That's a good idea. So, iodine inhalation, food-grade iodine. Somebody has recommended to me when I had a headache, iodine gargle. Have you heard that? Oh, I couldn't tolerate it. It was so nasty. So I'm going to stick with my oregano. One more thing for the lung infection. Now, this is a little bit off, off, is I have a friend who was hacking blood already. So he was having pneumonia. You know what they did is inhaled a powdered, the mist of charcoal inhaled. I know. So people say, how can you put that in your lung? And I thought, we inhale particulate matters all the time. So why not inhale a good one? Right? Okay, yes. For steaming at all? Tea tree I use mostly for skin. It's for for skin. wound, for cuts. Yeah, it heals okay. it well. But I have a caveat. If you are in the med missionary uh, field of Adventism, Dana, Geshelin, had a story on that, Stana, yes. So what she did, unfortunately, she put tea tree oil on a wound that was not healed inside. The wound has to heal from inside to out. So when she healed the top of the wound and the inside was smoldering, she had uh, tetanus. So be careful. Questions or comments? You're good? Yes. Uh, 
how long do you wait before you have to say it's now a science experiment? Oh, okay. So the broth usually we make a big batch, put it on mason jars, and then put it in the fridge for up to three days, and then I would I would toss it after that. Thank you. Now the poultices, if they're frozen, they would really extend for a long time. We talked about charcoal. Questions or comments? Okay, so there's a picture here of an infected wound on the foot. If you follow, I'll, I'll, I'll be next with you, uh, like a diabetic foot, if you follow Walt Cross, and I know Joyce will help with that, Walt Cross, Dr. Walt Cross was the ER doctor who's now into mountain natural medicine. They had a case of a foot that is, had a big uh, wound that was, it was even lacking muscle and tissue, and they did hot and cold consistently. Hot, cold, hot, cold, and it, it healed and grew back. Yes? Or what kind of onion you use? Thank you for asking that question. It, sometimes I forget that. So the onion you, we use for um, the broth is yellow and red, but I only use yellow because I don't want to drink gray soup. But the white is not as strong. And we're going to pass this around, and you're going to see that it has liquid already. You see? That's what you drink. So you filter it, and it's one tablespoon every day. And with, with natural remedies, there is no overdose, right? There is almost no, I would say there's no side effect to natural remedy. So remember, my patient said, okay, can you pass this around that thing? Thank you. Okay, just close it so you'll see. Okay, so that's, that's our cough syrup at home, and I've shared it with a lot of families, especially families with children. Have you tasted a nice-tasting cough syrup that doesn't taste like medicine? Yes. You've tasted a cough syrup. Okay. All right, any questions or comments before we close? Yes. Oh, microphone? Would you use the microphone, please? Yeah, thank you. We had a neighbor with huge leg cellulitis so bad, and she couldn't, she couldn't sleep at night. And I, was share, I shared this with Dawn, and uh, she talked to us about potatoes. So after work every day, my husband made shredded potatoes. Mm -hmm. We wrapped it around her legs, and then paper towel and plastic. She had her first night sleep. Uh, finally, I mean, after the very first time we did that, the next morning when she get up, it smelled so bad. Because it, but we did that every day, every day. She finally moved away and then died. But mm. I never saw anything so. Sorry, well, it's I'm okay. Sorry. She had cancer. Yeah, she, she was terminal probably. But yeah, yeah, she was. But mm. the relief. That's of right. The, the relief of the potato that's right yeah so simple and cheap yeah right very cheap very simple you are a medical missionary and what did we say every home a sanitarium when people go to your home they should learn something new about the wonderful mechanism of the human body that they never felt before do not hesitate to share every home a sanitarium there's a comment there in the back and then we'll go back to you, sir. No. Oh, okay. He passed. You just whisper it to me later. Oh, yes, sir. Not that I know of. We can probably just do the onion broth for cough or... I don't know. I, I, that's all I know. Maybe, would you do, um, sorry, maple syrup, give it a try, and then let us know. Report back. Report back. Okay, cool. All right. So are we ready? Oh, go ahead. Uh, we just simmer low for 10, 10 minutes. Doesn't the onion broth taste good? It's also good for digestion. Um, okay, when... Oh, I forgot. I forgot the onion inside, huh? Have you seen an onion and then this is the shape and then there's the thin, thin? So we peel that and we put it on a scrape or a burn and it will not blister. 
We've had that experience at home many times. It will not blister. With because God, because God says, "Come, you know, test That's me so and know That's that I am true." And so, uh, one there in the spirit of prophecy, as uh, Sister White said, that um, that we the hours before midnight are the best, and it says that you're supposed to go to mm. sleep at nine no at um sundown sundown is before the sun goes down so it's like right when the sun was going down so we my daughter and i when uh when she was younger i don't know she i don't know she was five or something i don't know what it was but so anyway so we did the experiment we went to bed it, uh every day be you know like when you're going to church before sundown you're getting ready you go to bed before sundown so you're in bed before sundown you might be a little uh, what do you call it? Not sleepy, but you always go to bed before the sun goes down, like right when it's going down. And uh, we did that experiment for like uh, three months. And, but it, right, it was like almost at the same exact time. Um, uh, it happened that I said, did you feel that? And uh, it was weird. It was like all of a sudden we felt all this energy it was some weird release of energy mm. and we all we both had this same experience where we just had this release of we just had this vibrant energy that just came back that was just just so lively it was just amazing so if you ever try do that try that you will be blessed and we don't go to bed before sundown every day but that experiment changed our mm. lives that you really do need to go to wow. bed before sundown every never day heard that it will change your life it's going to be a challenge for me <laughs> that's right so this is the i don't know this can do you see it that thin skin on an onion in the inside that's what we peel and it looks like skin and uh one time my was it you okay oh, let's just start with audrey uh, ate something really hot like lentils and she was like ah. you know so we immediately did this put it over and then iced over it and it didn't blister and he he went on with his day yeah yes sir have you ever heard of um, if somebody gets a cut and it's bleeding to cayenne. sprinkle black pepper over it so it's bleeding stops I've heard of cayenne have you heard of black pepper I have not tried it but now that we're in the cayenne so have you, have you, cayenne is, uh, does it burn your mouth? Yes, but it also wakes up your circulation. And Barbara O'Neill talks about this, a pinch of cayenne when people have angina under the tongue, just like you would a nitroglycerin, and it would open up. And then Dana, one of the med missionaries also, her mom had a stroke, and immediately they had a pinch of cayenne under the tongue. And after her stroke, her recovery, they have cayenne tincture that she would take every day and her recovery was complete. Very simple. I love cayenne. Recently, although it's not good if you eat it every day. Question about the honey. There's various types of honey. Of course, the commercial ones are diluted. Are you talking about raw honey only as it comes from the hive? So this one, I don't know about the raw. We tried to source it from a local honey farmer. And Manuka honey, I heard, is good, and it really tastes good. But we don't buy commercial anymore. And we didn't realize the difference until our family members from California came and tasted our locally sourced honey, and they never went back to Costco honey because the taste is just different. And it, it's alive, right? And you, you know, friends, have you heard about this? Recently I heard you shouldn't use metal spoon on honey. That's why they had that wooden something wooden dipper it's because the metal deactivates some of the live enzymes i haven't looked into it but i've heard about it yes i was gonna ask um with honey i went to a farmer's market um i think it was during COVID or just before and uh, they were talking about and i bought it it was a buckwheat honey mm. it is awful <laughs> but i mean it's sweet but it smells like um feet that have You're been in so socks funny. for about a week. And and I have it, and it's black. It's very dark. And they're saying it is as excellent as, as Manuka honey in some of the research. Mm. And uh, 
it really needs to be <laughs> if, <laughs> if you're going to eat it, let me tell you. But I wondered if you'd heard anything about buckwheat, honey. Now that I've heard of it, I don't think I'll go near it. I probably would do manuka honey, which is excellent. Lavender honey when, you know, the lavender season is there. Okay. Okay, last one. We are over time. I, n I didn't stay true to my word of one hour. Sorry. It's gone. <laughs> is that a dud again? Just tell me when you're... when. Okay. Shall we pray? Who wants to pray? Okay, I will pray. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, the creator of the universe, the creator that made our bodies so resilient, if only we would give it what it needs. Lord, we know we are on the wrong side of heaven still, but give us the wisdom and the heart to obey all of your health laws that we may experience strength of body and mind, that we may hear your Holy Spirit and be better prepared for your soon return. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Thank you so much, Centralia Church, for hosting us.